oversaw the reform of Medicaid in New Mexico, uh, changed it from a fee-for-service model uh, to a managed care model, improved on the delivery of health care in New Mexico, and saved hundreds of millions of dollars. I believe that as governor of New Mexico, if the federal government would have given New Mexico 43% less money, put me in charge of the delivery of health care to the poor in New Mexico, that I could have done it with 43% less money if they would have taken away all the strings and the mandates that went along with their Medicaid money. I'm going to make the same claim when it comes to Medicare, that I, as governor of New Mexico, could have overseen the delivery of health care to those over 65 with 43% less money. Federal government does away with all the strings and the mandates associated with how to do that. Right now, whenever you talk about a 43% reduction in Medicaid and Medicare, everybody is, well, you can't do that. You can't cut that much money from Medicaid and Medicare. If we don't cut Medicaid and Medicare, if we don't make do with less in what I think can be a very efficient way, if we don't do that, I think we're going to find ourselves with nothing. And that's the alternative. I think we are going to experience a monetary collapse. There's no, uh, there, there's no um, uh, escaping the mathematics that go along with the spending uh, that we're currently engaged in. A monetary collapse. What's a monetary collapse? Well, that's when the dollar goes from being worth something to being worth nothing. And it's not anything that the government is going to be able to say. Two weeks from Thursday, there's going to be a monetary collapse. So go out and spend all the money you have on goods and services because two weeks from Thursday, your money's not going to be worth anything. They don't, they don't announce it ahead of time because it ends up being completely unanticipated, but it ends up being a bond market collapse. And in Russia, Russia experienced a monetary collapse in the 80s. Ruble went from being worth something to being worth nothing. What happened in Russia is they developed the most sophisticated barter system the world has ever seen. That if you worked in the chainsaw factory, you got two chainsaws for your work for the week. You literally got two chainsaws. You walked out of the factory and you bartered that in a very short amount of time for food, for clothing, for energy, for the necessities that you needed to live in Russia. I don't think that's a system that we want to have in this country. And by the way, that didn't include health care at all. Health care went away. Everything that was government went away. Uh, military spending in Russia went away overnight uh, with the collapse of the monetary system. So we need to also reduce military spending by 43%. And we need to do that with the notion that we can provide and can provide for a strong national defense for this country and still cut military spending by 43%. And the operative word is, is defense as opposed to offense, uh, as opposed to nation building. I was on record prior to us going into Iraq saying, where's the military threat? I know that there's talk about weapons of mass destruction, but I don't think they're there. And if they are, we have the military surveillance capability to see it happen, and if it happens, we can go in and we can deal with it. I thought if we went into Iraq, we were going to find ourselves in a civil war to which there would be no end. Afghanistan, I thought initially, was totally warranted. We were attacked, we attacked back, and after having been in Afghanistan for six months, we wiped out Al-Qaeda. That was ten years ago. We're building roads, schools, bridges, highways, and hospitals in Iraq and Afghanistan and other places in the world. Don't we have those same needs here? <clears throat> so, reducing military spending by 43%. That's taking the warheads, the, the <coughs> nuclear warheads, from 2,300 to 500. Do we need to blow up the world nine times, or might five times do the trick? Uh, when it comes to military personnel, those in uniform, that needs to be cut back. The support staff, the civilian support staff for those in uniform, that needs to be cut back. Our military presence worldwide, the bases, the fact that we have 100,000 troops on the ground in Europe. If we're talking about a 43% reduction, that would mean 57,000 troops instead of 100,000 troops. And I have a hard time understanding why there was 57, why we would need 57,000 troops. And I'm talking also about 
Japan, I'm talking about South Korea. When you talk about research and development, for decades we've been talking about the fact that we need to be smarter uh, when it comes to fighting future wars as opposed to wars in the past. Well, a lot of rhetoric, but there hasn't been any action to go along with that. Uh, intelligence, which seems to be an oxymoron when it comes to the military, but um, can't, we, can't we really be smarter? So, the biggest threat to our national security is the fact that we're bankrupt. The fact that we continue to spend so much more money than what we take in, we're going to be left with no national defense unless we fix this. Currently, we're spending 52 cents of the worldwide dollars spent on military spending, and we're 5% of the world's population. Comparing that to China, they're spending 9 cents out of that dollar, which, by the way, I've done some calculations on the back of a napkin, is basically the amount of interest that we're paying them on the money that they've loaned us. I think that's a little ironic. And I don't think they're loaning us money to drop bombs on us. I don't see China as a military threat, but we should be vigilant to any military threats that exist. I'm the free market guy. I really believe in free markets. I think there's a magic to free markets, but let them work. Uh, when it comes to education, when it comes to energy, uh, free market approaches are really something that, uh, that should be embraced. And we, we move further and further away from free markets. Healthcare delivery in this system, in this country, is about as far removed from free market as it possibly could be. 